Good morning. My name is Bruce Elgort, <laughs> and I am here to show you how OpenNTF, open source solutions, can save you time, money, and your hair. <laughs> yes, that's my head. All right, I'm male. Again, I'm bald. Born in New York, July 2nd, 1963. So that makes me less than 43, greater than 21, and not yet. <laughs> At least not yet. I got it. I screwed it up there. So, all right. I'm the co-founder of OpenNTF.org, and uh, enjoy the presentation. Oh, wait, and one more thing. Steve Jobs, OK. Uh, people in the first 14 rows. <laughs> You may get wet. <laughs> All right. How's everyone enjoying Lotusphere today? It's the last day. How many people got sick this week? I'm legally blind, and I can't see you, but how many? Just say something. Yeah, all right. What? All right. It's premature slide here. All right. We're going to first talk about what is OpenNTF. How many people in here have no idea what OpenNTF.org is? Again, I can't see you, but just. <laughs> all right. Uh, we're going to talk about why use open source software in the first place. You know, uh, as you saw on the product showcase, there are a lot of commercial vendors in the notes and domino world, and uh, they offer a lot of great products, but there are alternatives, and that is open source. Um, we'll have a quick run through of the OpenNTF site, and uh, we'll go through the various sections of the site and tell you, how to, tell you how to use some of them. We'll have a quick run through of four m most excellent applications. In fact, three out of the four applications up here, OpenLog, Dom Bulletin, Domino Wiki, and Help, three of the gentlemen who wrote them are here. And there are a lot of other projects, which I'll show you in a minute, and a lot of the people who wrote those applications are here as well. And I won't pick on you guys too much. Uh, I'll talk about how to start your own project on OpenNTF. And then I'll tell you how um, we'll have a wrap up, and I'll tell you how to contact me if you need to. We are going to have questions and answers at the end, and I'll leave enough time. And uh, if you come up and ask a question, you'll get one of those beautiful OpenNTF Blue t-shirts. Uh, and then, oh, oh, and again, questions and answers stump the chump. So let's roll. All right, some things you won't learn in this session. You know, we always have to state in the beginning what you won't learn. The first is what all the open different, uh, what all the different open source licenses really mean. You know, I could spend probably a week, we, we should have like open source license fee or something like that because it's, there's a lot to learn there. You'll learn uh, not how to make other people write software for you. And uh, you'll also learn that um, you won't stop paying for your software. As I mentioned before, there are a lot of great commercial products out there, and they offer a uh, tremendous amount of value to everyone. So open source is not your uh, first and only stop in, in software. Uh, how to regrow your hair. You won't learn that, obviously, because I am not an expert. And for those of you who came to Lotus Fear to learn how to spot weld, you won't learn that either. So the OpenNTF mission, it's pretty simple. We provide a framework, a website, for the community, you guys, to develop open source applications for IBM, Lotus Notes, and Domino. I had to say IBM, Lotus Notes, and Domino. I couldn't just say Notes and Domino. Um, which can be freely distributed. All right, again, our mission is to provide a framework for the community to develop open source applications for IBM, Lotus Notes, and Domino, which can be freely distributed. OK. So here are, is a small partial list, well, a partial list, of some of the OpenNTF applications out there. OpenNTF Mail, I'm sure a lot of you know about that. How many people know about it? Haven't we gone through this before? <laughs> All right. 
Domino Wiki, which I'll talk about today, BB Log Analyzer, Dom Bulletin, uh, which I'll show today. By the way, BB Log Analyzer, for those of you who run BlackBerry Enterprise servers, this is a great tool to take all, that, all those text files that the BlackBerry server generates and put them in a nice uh, notes database so you can see what the heck's going on in your BEZ environment. Oh boy, Blogsphere, Declan Lynch's project up here. It's a, uh, a, a blogging template. KSpam is a server-side add-in for the Domino server for spam management, real, wor real workflow, user admin utility. Uh, Keith Strickland, you here? He wrote that. Uh, EU Power Tools, Jess Stratton. Help Database, which I'll go through today. The Automated Admin, again, Jess Stratton. Uh, Active Site, DXL Peak, uh, Macquadera, Shirley Template, Rocky Oliver. Uh, Common View Interface, Trigger Happy, Damien Katz. Trigger Happy is an application that sits on the server and can intercept anything that goes on in your notes and domino applications and do something. You know, it's not an agent. It runs below the, the agent subsystem. It's really great. I wanted to talk about it today, but I couldn't fit it in. Uh, domino outline to Ajax uh, transformer. We met this gentleman uh, downstairs in the product showcase. Great application. iWatch, uh, Tom Duff, Duffbird's application. How many of you use Google News Alerts? All right, well, that application aggregates them all into a notes database so you don't have to manage them all in your email. Let's see, OpenLog, Julian Robichaud's application, which I'll talk about today. That's okay. You guys are weird. <laughs> Quick Elementor, mail scan, mail analysis, uh, can tell you, you know, everything that, about the mail rejections that you get. You know, how many of you send mail and it bounces back? Well, it, this thing can uh, add tremendous value and tell you what exactly is going on in human terms. Uh, Web or Node Survey Reports, ACL Help, LDD Monkey. How many of you use LDD, NotesNet? Yeah. Okay. Well, how many of you, like, find, like, you're reading a post and you want to really see what's in the next post without going to the next post so you don't have to go back to the post you were reading? Well, LDD Monkey is an add-in for the uh, Firefox browser that shows you the full body of the, of the uh, if you hover over the next response in that hierarchy. Again, it's not really a notes down application, but it's something that has to do with our community. So great job. And many more. There are other resources on the OpenNTF site, the code bin, the application catalog, wiki FAQ, OpenNTF blog, Taking Notes podcasts, and the Righteous Hack Awards. That's not up there yet, but hopefully after Lotus Field, you'll learn something about that. Because we, we all know that you, you know, there are, you, Domino's perfect. Notes are it's perfect. There's no hacks necessary, right? All right. A bit of history. Uh, OpenNTF was started in December of 2001. It was born on the NotesNet forums when a gentleman by the name of Nathan T. Freeman, or NTF, has no correlation, believe me. Nathan, I'm sorry. Um, Nathan made a post soliciting the idea for an open source community for Notes and Domino, and a whole bunch of developers from around the world said, yeah, Nathan, great idea. They offered up some resources, and uh, NotesOSS.org was born. Like looking at me like I'm crazy or something. The original name of Notes, uh, of, well, of, the original name was NotesOSS.org, and um, it got changed. I'm going to tell you about that in the next slide, but I got to show you the t shirt. This was at Lotus Fair, I think, 2003, and Julian is actually wearing one because he's, uh, he's like a, an old guy. So, <laughs> but there it is. So, you never forget your roots, right? All right. So again, I said notesoss.org and not OpenNTF. Why did we change the name? Well, can you say lawyer? And can you say patent infringement? But uh, I'll tell you that the people from um, to, the to, to Tabasco Company, they sent me a whole case of Tabasco and some coffee mugs because you know I wrote them and said, can we please use your logo? And they said, no, you can't, but here's a case of Tabasco. So. Uh, <laughs> So the first nine months of the uh, site, of the, the notesoss.org site, you know, we had this website, right? Build it and they shall come, right? How many of you had that, had that harebrained idea, right? I'll just create a website and everyone's going to use it, yeah. But no, they, they didn't. <laughs> so um, that gave us some time to build the support infrastructure that you see today. And I'll talk about that in a little while. We did have a few early endeavors. Uh, Lookout Express was a, uh, an attempt by a couple of us to create a 
out, an Outlook UI for the notes mail template, or the, uh, for notes mail. And we also had a thing called Project Crimson. Do you guys, anyone remember Garnet? Anyone remember laughter? OK. All right. So what we really needed was that a killer application, and, and this was the consensus, consensus of the group that started um, notesoss.org. And we said to ourselves, what is the one application that we all use and love that needs some uh, help? <laughs> all right, anybody? Mail. Mail. You guys, did you get this? Oh, you guys read the slides already. <laughs> all right. No, it's mail, of course, right? So what did we do? We clicked on the clicker, and it didn't go. All right. So we had 11 developers from around the world. This is in the pre-R6, so I think this is in the September time frame. And we decided that we needed to add a, like, a, like a dozen features to the mail template. So what did we do? We created things that we now all take for granted, like reply and forward indicators. You know, why would you need to know that you reply to a message, right? You go, duh. All right. We also added a, a follow-up feature. You know, there was no follow-up feature in notes mail back in 2002. Was it 2003? Uh, two? All right. Uh, we added something called Quick Stuff, which you guys see in there today. Uh, a recent memo action, the ability to show message headers, right? So when you guys, when, I, when the, you call the help desk or users call the help desk, everyone says, can you send me the headers? In, in prior versions of the notes client, it was very hard to navigate in the menus to find that information. So we added that. We also added a find memo action. So that each user didn't have to go to the smart icons up there and find that little, excuse me, magnifying glass. So uh, we added a send receive action. We added a preference pane. So you could turn on and off all the features that we've added. So if you didn't like find memo action, watch the monitor. Um, you could turn it off, and many more. So the community loved it. You guys loved it, and you still love it. Um, the press loved it. We got a, lo uh, a lot of press coverage on it. And uh, thousands of downloads occurred in the first couple of uh, weeks, actually. It was kind of weird. But, uh, and this application put OpenNTF on the map, and hence us being here uh, at Lotus for the last couple of years. And it's not due to us. It's due to all of you supporting the efforts of the work that people like Julian, Jess, Mike, and all you guys do. So, um, so I'm ahead here. And I already asked, do you guys use the uh, OpenNTF mail template? And a lot of people do. All right. So the OpenNTF site, let's see. It's got a home page, like every website. And it actually uses an OpenNTF Open NTF application called DOM CMS. Um, we also use something called the project management system to manage projects that, that are on the Open NTF site, and we call that PMT, and that's actually a template as well. So, you know, we're eating our own dog food type of thing, right? So, uh, the PMT is used for, by project chefs to uh, create code releases, track bugs, uh, have you guys request features for the application. Uh, uh, engage in project discussions. And again, the, um, this, every part of the OpenNTF site is RSS enabled, for those of you who use RSS readers. How many people use RSS readers? <laughs> Clap. No, I'm kidding. All right. Again, the main bar uses DOM Bulletin, which is uh, being used by Lotusphere Online for the third year in a row. Great application, and I'll go through that later today. Uh, it's a discussion forum that we use on the site for technical questions, uh, site, uh, problems with the site, or just general uh, what we call bar talk. Again, RSS enabled. All right, we have the code bin with over 1,000 code snippets. And the code bin is a really unique thing, not only because uh, it's uh, RSS enabled, but you can actually rate the code. And you can add comments and so forth. So not only do you have this you know, in the sandbox we used to have and probably still have, this way of um, you know, just these responses. And there's never any full life cycle that goes on. You know, maybe the guy will put out a new release. Maybe he'll read it. But typically, the stuff there just kind of lives there. The code bin it is, uh, is living. The application catalog, let's say that you write your own open source application, and you don't want to put it under management on the site. Well, we say, hey, you know, we have an application catalog. Link to your application that you manage on your site. Go for it. 
OK? And we have other fun stuff that we do. Uh, we, we started the OpenNTF blog uh, about a month ago, again, RSS enabled. And uh, Julian Robocho and I started a, a podcast series called Taking Notes, which is available on the iTunes music store. So let's see. There's the obligatory you know, picture of the OpenNTF site. It's not really crooked. You know, when you look at it, I just did that. So uh, just quickly, we have a menu going across the top, like all websites do. Every month, we have a featured application. We have the top 10 active projects on the site. That changes, I think, on a, a daily basis now. I, I changed it. And uh, you can see co new code releases on the right-hand side. And start here. You know, what if you're new to OpenNTF? You know, what do you do? What is OpenNTF, et cetera? All right. Uh, just some general facts about OpenNTF. We have over 25,000 registered users now. Um, didn't they say in the opening general session that there were a million notes developers? I, I was really psyched when I put this together, saying, wow, 25,000 users. And then Mike or someone said, a million developers. Like, ooh, we have a long way to go, right? All right, we have over 5,000 downloads per month. So you, you people are all downloading lots of these great applications. Um, we have over 2,000 unique uh, visitors per day. And the server, by the way, is hosted uh, by the PSC group, by a company that John Head works for. And uh, they've been very gracious over the last couple of years. And uh, thank you, PSC. All right, the OpenNTF operations crew. Who runs this site? Um, Anil Vartak. Anil is here. Yay. Now, I got to tell you a story about the middle guy. Vince Sherman, um, from the Netherlands, was uh, supposed to be here again this year. But he decided to go skiing. And his wife decided to take a picture. And she kept saying, all right, Vince, just go up the hill a little more, go up the hill a little more. And what did he do? He broke his ankle. So he's not going skiing next year before Lotus Fear. And myself, I'm, I'm from Vancouver, Washington. Uh, Vancouver, USA, as they say. <laughs> yeah, you, know the, you know the joke. All right. So what the heck is open source software? How many people don't know what open source software is? Can I skip this slide? No, we'll talk about it. All right, open source software is software which the underlying programming code can, you can read it, you can modify it, and you can create derivative versions of it um, you know, and make them available as, uh, you know, back and actually place the changes back into the, to the, to the program or a simpler definition would be free programs created through the collaborative efforts of programmers from around the world. And I, I like that definition a lot, because that really says what, what we do and what you do at OpenNTF. All right, why use open source software in the first place? Well, it's, uh, it helps reduce the cost of software development, right? Why build it? What, um, how many people build versus buy? Build. Buy. No one buys software here. All right. All right. All right. Good thing the product showcase is over. Um, so all this is accomplished by distributing the development over many users around the world. So like you saw earlier in the OpenNTF mail template, you know, I wasn't sitting in my bathrobe in Vancouver, Washington, you know, banging out the code for OpenNTF mail. There were people in Paris, France, New York City, the Netherlands, all over the world. And uh, it, it was great. And we did it in two weeks. So it was uh, quite a remarkable feat. All right, so if you don't like something in open source, you can change it, right? The un underlying source code is there. So, um, so open source means free, right? Nope. Uh, you still may require training, support, et cetera, like look at Red Hat, right? They're a, a company that uh, publishes open source software. And o uh, open source software has tremendous um, Flexible licensing options. I mean, there's a lot of licenses I said earlier. And a lot of them, um, they're very, uh, very flexible. And um, they all have their own caveats. So um, you need to read the open source licenses when you um, download open source software. One of the things that we've learned over the last couple of years, and especially here at Lotusphere, is that we, the OpenNTF operations crew, need to make that information more clear to you guys. So we're going to be putting together a whole section about licensing and make it, you know, we're going to try to make it like uh, really simple um, and, not, and not make you read these long agreements and so forth. So, all right. So 
what are some of the valid concerns why people won't use open source software? Well, like we said before, support, right? Uh, and accountability. When something goes wrong, who is going to, you know, take the, take the hit, the blame, right? Um, and, but supporters assert that open source software is more reliable, right? Which, 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 which I believe it is. Problems can be found and fixed quicker. So, all right, so here we go. Let's see how OpenNTF, open source, open source solutions can save you, everybody, time, money, and your hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Vince. We're, we're, we're thinking of you. So, OK, so let's start with talking about an application that you, the developers, or developers would, would love and, and do love. So the situation is there will be a compliance audit in four weeks. That's for you, Chris. <laughs> so, so the slide will turn. So file database new, right? It's as easy as doing that, right? When you need to create a new database, file database new, every single one of us, right? So OpenLog, developed by Julian Robichaud of nsftools.com. And what is it? It is, well, let me say, how many people here can say that they know about every issue going on in their notes and dominant application, every error? You're using OpenLog. Open <laughs> right on. All right, so what the heck is OpenLog? It's a common error and event logging framework in one database. OK, uh, it's one database to log all of your IBM, Lotus, Notes, and Domino application errors, one place. Works great for server agents as well as Notes client UI applications. So not only can we track things that are going wrong in agents, again, if some end user is there and they get an error and you use OpenLog, you can track it. Go, gee, go figure, right? All right. How to get started with OpenLog. Download the database from the OpenNTF site. Sign the database. You're going to hear me repeat this several times. Download, sign it, change the ACL. Remember to change the depositor for write public documents, because that's the mechanism that the OpenLog database needs for these records to be pushed into the OpenLog single database. Uh, and then you need to point this variable, uh, log db name in the open log function script, which I'll talk about in a minute, which I'll talk about in a minute, to, uh, to the location of your open log database in your environment. And Julian, it does work in a, in a replicated environment as well, correct? Yes. OK. All right. So here's a pretty picture of the open log database. Some of you may not find it pretty, but it's, it's just a database to track errors. As you can see here, we have a, a server agent, right? Open log, Lotusphere 2006 agent. That was the name of the agent that I wrote that I, that I made an error occur. And you can see here, I have a view or form action where I logged an error. And you can actually see in the view here that the actual error that occurred. OK. So how do you get started? You take the open log functions, which is a Lotus script library, or the open log class, which is a Java library. Again, I didn't say that it works for not uh, works for Lotus script code and for uh, Java code. Julian, does it work for at functions? No. no. So maybe I was wrong in saying that every error. Chris, I failed the audit. All right. So again, place this, uh, these script libraries in your application. And don't forget to click yes on this dialog box that we all know and love. So changes to the uh, database can get, uh, can get uh, logged. All right, uh, modifying your code to work with OpenLog. Add this line to the options section of your code. Use OpenLog functions. And then where you have your uh, error handling stuff before you resume or terminate, you call log error and poof, that, uh, that error gets written to the OpenLog database. So now, wasn't that easy, right? Pretty simple. Yes, all right. So let's error together. So here I have a, uh, a little uh, script that I wrote. It's probably the extent of my ability in Lotus Script. Uh, that's why I'm a speaker and not a developer. Uh, so as you can see here, I'm going to try to convert ABC to an integer, right? And I'm, I call log error there before I, uh, before I blow out of the, uh, the, uh, the script here. So what's going to happen? As you saw before, there's the document that gets written at 11.57 uh, AM. I got a type mismatch in a view or form action. That was a button, by the way, on a form. OK, um, 
looking at the error generated by the button. This is the record that, 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 we, uh, that gets generated. You can see here the event, the type, and time, and severity of the error. We have the user who did it, the access they had to the database, and the version of the client they're running. We have the error details. We have the click of the button. We have the server, database, agent, and method that, that the error occurred in. We can know whether, uh, w whether a notification was sent, and I'll show you that in a second, to the, to the person who needs to respond to this error. And uh, we see whether it occurred in a view or a form. As you can see on this screen here, this particular error occurred where? On a version 7.0, um, a 6.5.4. So much for big slides. Um, and it occurred in what? In an agent. OK. There we go. Thanks. <laughs> All right. So as you can see here, I mentioned before notifications. You can set up notifications to notify people when something goes wrong. So you create a, a, new, data, a new notification profile. You can see here, um, notify notes development group, and send it to uh, you know, monkey man at bruceelgort.com. And you enable the agent. It's, I, I think, disabled by default. So in the log notification profile, we can say, give it a name, a category, a status, and a description uh, that gets sent in the mail message in the notification. What did Julian do here? He said, well, only send notifications to that, to that group or that person if it matches a server, uh, certain condition by like server names and or database name and or agent name and or function and or error text and or event type and or severity. Just a few options. <laughs> All right, and here in the notification pro profile, who are we sending it to? The subject, the body text header, uh, include the full event details, and include a doc link. Ooh, send to, subject, body text header, event details, and doc link. So why be so negative all the time and only log errors? What happens if you want to log good things that happen in your applications, happy things, right? Open log can do more, right? So there's a, a function that Julian ad added called log event, which takes one parameter. It's a message to say, hey, I made it to line 58, right? Or you can add log event extended, which says not only take, add the message, but include the severity, which you can customize as well, and a, a doc link to, to, the, to the actual record where the error occurred. Pretty neat stuff. In fact, there are a lot of people who use this as a front end to their bug tracking systems within their, within their companies. And uh, there's a, a beta that Julian's working on right now that will also work with Note 7 DD, uh, domino domain monitoring. So uh, as I uh, say to Julian, job well done. Yeah. All right, ready? Everyone, let's see how OpenNTF, open source solutions, can save you time money, and your hair. Uh-huh. Hello, Photoshop. All right, so situation. Your boss says she needs a discussion forum for a trade show next month. What do we do? File database new, Dom Bulletin. Michael Borak, Paris, France. Michael. State-of-the-art discussion forum for Notes and Domino, similar to the PHP BB system that we see on a lot of websites. Notes client and browser uh, support, highly configurable, Current, currently at version 1.1a. Actually, it's 1.2. 1.2 came out when the slides were, you know, wherever they were between, between my house and Lotosphere. So Dom Bulletin has been used by Lotosphere Online, as I said earlier, for the past three years, used by many Lotus business parts, partners as their uh, in, as their product support forum, and used to host the OpenNTF main bar discussion forum, as I said earlier. Again, we eat our own dog food. All right, there's a pretty little picture of the interface. Uh, it's, you know, it looks like Outlook. <laughs> no, it's, it's, uh, it's very, very well designed, very, very, very good UI. Here is the, the way it looks on the web on the OpenNTF site, with the way it did look, because we're on version 1.2 now. As you can see here, we have the uh, posting in the notes client as well as in the web browser. So what do we do? We download it from the OpenNTF site. Well, we find it first. Then we sign it. We configure the ACL database roles and the database setup document. And I, I have to say that you need to read the help using this database. I know that we all don't. And then we, you know, 
We just don't, and then we have problems. So read it. All right, we're going to, the DOM bulletin configuration is quite easy. You configure categories, skins, authentication and security. It's very flexible. Mail, user profiles, same time integration, uh, messenger uh, integration with like AOL, Yahoo, et cetera, uh, and other advanced options. So as you can see here, we have the categories from the OpenNTF site. And uh, over here, it's very flexible. You can choose your own icons, your colors, add subcategories, et cetera. And uh, skinnable, right? Make it, look any, make it look the way you want it to look. It's not, you're not forced. So you can customize it using cascading style sheets. Uh, you can include your own HTML you know, above and below the forum section. And uh, user profiles, you know, a lot of people you know, wonder how we store you know, other things outside the name and address book. The name and address book is not touched or modified in DOM Bulletin. I know, I know, OK? It's names. I can't give away everyone's names. It's, oh, you, no, you, oh, you can? <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> All right, so here, we, we dug in a little bit here. And you can see here, we support AIM, ICQ, MSN. Uh, we allow someone to put in their website, their avatar, their, whether they want to subscribe to a newsletter generated do, by Don Bulletin, et cetera. Um, we actually allow people to post you know, things to the, um, what do you call it, to the site master, the webmaster. And the webmaster can actually be notified when they enter the database that there's pending, uh, pending requests from end users. Um, again, visitors can leave comments, and the, webma and the webmaster can see them. So. All right, you can also include an announcement right on, on the top of the forum. So here, boy, there's a lot of options to configure. So I suggest you download it and take a look at it. But you can allow anonymous access. You don't have to, you don't require um, uh, a name and address book. You can have self-registration. You can say forbidden usernames, right? How many times have you wanted someone not to enter the name? Yeah, administrator or postmaster or webmaster. Forbidden words, right? So. Um, Smiley's UBB files, file upload support size limitations. Woo! Uh, mail, enable uh, a site newsletter. Uh, you can do that. You can include a footer, and you can specify an address that the mail is sent from, the newsletter is sent from, and e even the mailbox, that mailbox file name. Again, more configuration. Whether you want to have session tracking, whether you want to have uh, support for these various messenger clients. Etc. Just a lot of great stuff. Same time integration as well. More options. Whether you want to store some of the code out on the HT, on, out on the HTTP uh, file system, whether you want to have gzip compression and other fun stuff. There, here we can see when a, a user first goes to DOM Bulletin, what they're going to see. They have to choose their uh, skin, right? You may have more than one available to them. You uh, can have multiple languages, right? Select a language, and I think there are a couple supported now. Choose the way you want it to see it. There, there are currently five different options for the, for the presentation of the discussion forum. Woo, a lot of stuff. So now available for download. New features include polls, RSS, by the category, topic, and, and for the entire bulletin board system, and signature blocks. Job well done, Michael. <laughs> that is one smoking application, I'll tell you. So, all right, let's see how OpenNTF Open source solutions can save you time, money. It gets better. All right. Situation. HR said they need a wiki by tomorrow. So what do we do? Again, file database new Domino wiki. Mr. Ben Poole from the UK. He's in the audience here. All right. What is, what is a wiki, right? A wiki as defined by Ward Cunningham, the, the father of wikis. Um, it's the simplest online database that could possibly exist. Now, there's a great definition, right? But it is. Um, some examples are Wikipedia, which you guys are probably familiar with, Katrina Help, the OpenNTF Wikifac, and ValWiki, so uh, pretty popular wikis. We actually used a wiki this year, uh, a whole bunch of uh, friends and uh, friends and family for Lotusphere, and we tracked, oh, there's everyone's cell, oh, I didn't put the cell numbers up. So we, we used it to you know, say, hey, where are you staying? How can I get in contact with you at Lotusphere, et cetera? So, and Ben actually customized it to look you know, with the Lotusphere theme. All right, again, download the template from the OpenNTF site, sign it, configure it, ACL roles, database setup, et cetera. 
There is a picture of the way the application looks from the notes client. It's very simple. Again, you have some views up here that talk, whoop, whoa. You have your, your navigation up there, the database configuration, and the views that appear on the, on the web. So let's take a look at the default out of the box setup for, um, for the wiki. When you, well, I, this is not exactly the way it comes out of the box, but that's the standard template. You can see that uh, it looks like a web page, right? So what do we do? How do you configure it? There are four CSS styles to select from. Uh, you can enter the URL for the wiki. You have to enter that in. The system needs that. The site name, the blurb for the RSS feed, that, that's going to be published out. Um, the protocol, it supports HTTP and HTTPS. Um, the domain name, the, the browser support that you want to format, the ISO format, like EN-GB for, for Great Britain. Uh, the contact email, the copyright message, and the generator message. So in the upper right-hand corner, you see here that we have a, a little navigator. It says start page, quick start, index. So far, uh, the start page, quick start, uh, and index are pretty self-explanatory. Recent changes. What are the most recent changes that happened within the wiki? Uh, the RSS feed, all the files that have been uploaded to the wiki, and the ability to create a new wiki page. So let's create a new wiki page here. So I created one for Lotusphere 2006. As you can see here, I, I have, uh, it looks like Quick Place a little bit, for those of you Quick Place. And I didn't mention that you really don't need to configure access control for this if you really have an environment where you just need to throw up a site that may not contain proprietary information and you don't want to bother users with authentication. This, this, that's the primary premise. Like, you can go to Wikipedia and create your own page. You're not challenged. Well, you are challenged for a username and password. But the default here is an anonymous access. You can, you can type your content here. You can assign a category to the wiki page, the page you're creating. And you can also attach a file. So uh, here, you can also uh, place a username in there, you know, like Bruce Elgort, and you can have it stored in a cookie. It could be any name, but it's just a, a wiki name for you. And you can also configure it to work with your uh, Domino security, you know, your name and address book, if, if you need to. All right, click on the style tips graphic to make style uh, tips drawer pop up. And we saw that little graphic in the upper left-hand corner before, because we want to be able to add underlines, bolds, links to other pages, sites, et cetera. And we can do that. And we can, uh, like I said, headings, bold, italic, uh, camel case words, external links, uh, link to another wiki page, and, and file attachments. So here, you can see I typed in Lotusphere 2006, new open NTF, open source, blah, blah, blah. And you can see I added some what we call wiki markup. And I had clicked on that little drawer. That was that panel you saw on the previous screen. And this is what the page looks like once it's rendered. OK? So it, again, there's no like uh, external editors that, that are required for this. It uses wiki. It's, it's very simple. I mean, even, even salespeople can use it. So, <laughs> All right, so here's the recent changes view. I can see, there's the Lotusphere 2006 page by Bruce Elgort. And if you don't type in a username, it'll put your IP address. So you can see the 127.0.0.1 was probably me playing around. All right, uh, again, the, co the content that was just added, the new category, Lotusphere that, was, that I selected on the right-hand corner of the previous page. And you can also full text this bad boy and search away. All right, job well done, Ben. All right, let's see how OpenNTF, Open Source Solutions, can save you time, m money, and your hair. It's getting there. <laughs> All right, so the IT department said they need a help desk next week. I don't know. How many IT, desk, uh, IT departments don't have help desk nowadays? Not many, right? But this is the number one downloaded application on OpenNTF. I don't get it. I mean, I get it. It's great stuff, but I just don't get it because everyone's got a help desk, right? So file database new help by Ehrlich Kraus and Thomas Schulte of uh, Germany. So they're not here today, so uh, we, can't, we can't point them out. So, All right, so it's a complete help desk ticket tracking system. It's, um, it allows you to you know, sign and follow up on tickets. I mean, this is standard for every help desk system. Submit tickets via mail, right? No need to change the mail template, by the way. It uses uh, the forms.ntf database where you make the change and you can actually 
have something appear on your actions menu on every uh, user's desktop, so they don't have to. So you don't have to modify the mail template. You uh, it has automated machine inventory as well. Again, where you don't have to modify the mail template, it's something that's stored in the central forms.ntf database. Unlimited ticket escalation configuration. You're not just forced for a definitive set of uh, escalation rules. Um, multilingual, right? It, they're, they're, like in Dom Bulletin, I think we have pre-configured languages. But in, in help, you can configure any language you want. OK, there's English and German, I think, as the default. I didn't put that on the screen. But it also has uh, web services, which are coming soon, which you may have seen demonstrated in the, uh, the BlackBerry RIM booth, where they actually showed how you can create a ticket in the help, OpenNTF help database via BlackBerry. Uh, and integrated with the OpenNTF open log application. Go figure, right? Very good. So again, download the template from the OpenNTF site. It's currently at version 1.5. Sign the database, change the ACL, assign database roles, admin, edit all, read all. You can see all that stuff in the database. Select your language. Oh, German or English, there it is. And um, configure keywords, language translation documents, etc. Again, here's the UI. I didn't really have time to fill this, this system out because I, I, I just didn't have time. Again, tickets by users, date and number. Active tickets by user. You know, I, there's just tons of different ways. New to-dos by supporter, database, and number. Unread mail tickets and to-dos. Just tons of great stuff. Um, this is what the ticket form looks like. Again, open source, available to you today to download. Uh, you can uh, look at the actions taken by the person working on the ticket. You can track miscellaneous info, system information, which we talked about before, the hardware information collected um, by the quick call form, to-dos. You may have subtasks you know, for each uh, ticket in the, in the database. And the configuration. I mean, again, it's highly, highly configurable. And I think that's, that's, uh, we should uh, have some kudos to all the guys, who write, uh, guys and girls who write this open NTS stuff. They make this stuff so flexible and configurable. It just, you know, for open source, it, it blows me away. So again, here's the RIM stuff that they were uh, demonstrating at the RIM booth. <laughs> all right. So let's say you use, you use all these applications, or one of them, and you found a bug. What do you do? You look at your watch and see how much time you have left. All right. Uh, you found a bug in one of these applications. You had a great idea, or you had a great idea for a new cool feature. Or you wanted to collaborate with other Lotus geeks using the, who use these applications. What do you do? Well, you would head on over to the OpenNTF site. Remember that framework we created for you. Uh, find the project you wanted. Log in. Post a bug. Post a feature request. Uh, post and or reply to a discussion topic. Or even volunteer to help with the project. So here is the, uh, just a screenshot of the uh, project management that we have for which database? for Shirley Template, for Rocky's application. You can see the various releases. There's a tab for About, Releases, Screenshots, uh, ooh, my eyes are bad, Requests, Bugs, <laughs> Name, et cetera. I mean, Name, News. Woo, I'm getting old. Right? OK, so what about starting your own project? It, it's really simple. From those menus, you have the ability to uh, create a project, register. We do require registration. We ask for your your name and your email address, that's it. We don't collect any other type of personal information. And did I mention that you don't always have to register to download an application. It's up to the project chef, which I didn't talk about in this session, which I would have liked to, but it's up to the, the project manager to decide whether their OpenNTF application requires registration or not. All right, you fill out the form, project name, brief description, et cetera, and, and click away. So now you can post bugs, uh, post releases, fix bugs, right? Uh, Post documentation, and we do want more people to write documentation for open NTF apps. That was something that came up in the birds of a feather. And uh, you may have your application featured in this presentation next year, right? So uh, again, here's the form. Yes, it's just a simple form, pretty simple for creating a new project. All right, so thank you. So we're almost done, all right? So I hope this uh, male, who's bald, Born in New York, July 2nd, 1963, who is less than 43, greater than 21, and not, has shown you 
how OpenNTF open source solutions can save you time, money, and yeah. <laughs> All right, we're getting there. Dad's had to contact me. A lot of you, uh, I, I maintain a weblog at uh, bruceelgort.com. Uh, Julian and I host the Taking Notes podcast, which you can find on the OpenNTF site or from the iTunes Music Store by typing in Lotus Notes. Uh, and there's my email address, bruce.elgort at gmail.com or monkeyman at bruceelgort.com, as you saw earlier. Uh, I like to say Ben Poole's uh, information, can, uh, more about Ben Poole can be found at benpool.com. Julian Robicho at nsftools.com. That's a pretty famous site in the notes world. Michael Borak at uh, hinkyminky.net. We got to talk about that one, Michael. <laughs> it's on film here, too. So, uh, Erla Krauss at ignori.de. So, I want to thank you, but we're not done yet. We have a couple minutes for questions. Again, you have to fill out your evaluations. And uh, this session has been Learn How Open NTF Open Source Solutions Can Save You Time, Money and your hair. So we can open up the microphones. And it's thundering. Oh, no, I shouldn't have clicked ahead. If you ask a question, I'll give you a t-shirt. What? Oh, go to the mics, please. Very, oh, the mics are working. Can someone go to the shirts? Uh, we have uh, uh, a task force around the world. <laughs> no, th I mean, that's open source. You have the ability to change it. That's, that's the beauty of open source. But it, when they post it, do they post it back on the website? They can, yes. They can communicate with the person who wrote it and said, I've made these great changes to the DOM bulletin system. I'd like to contribute them back to you to include in a future release. So there's review prior to it actually getting posted. Oh, reviews. yes, yeah. Okay, that's Thank you. You're welcome. A shirt. A shirt. Oh, hey. Next question, please. Yeah, I had a, oops, like, <laughs> I have an idea for a uh, project, but it's borrowing from another open source uh, project. Uh, do I have to refer to that in the, uh, if I write something? You need to look at the license agreement of that other open source application, read it carefully, and if it, it permits you to use those libraries or whatever, then you have to you know, reference them accordingly as per the license. Okay. Okay. Hey, come on. Where'd he go? Oh, hey, you got a shirt. All right, next. Okay, I just, uh, my name is Pablo Martinez, and I've been using some of the open NTF stuff, and it's really saved me a couple times. So I'm, I'm tired of just taking, and what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to uh, help Ben Poole write the documentation for the, uh, the wiki application. Woo! And that's something that came up in the birds of a feather yesterday, that a lot of the applications locked, uh, lack documentation. And uh, I couldn't agree more. There's been a couple efforts lately to create documentation, and there's one of them. So go for it. The applications in uh, our environment have to be written to work for two languages, uh, for English users and French users. Is there an awareness with OpenNTF for those kind of, that kind of environment, or are the applications sort of unilingual based? Like I was thinking of the help desk application that seemed to work just either in German or English. A good, great question. Well, open in, um, the help database allows you to configure any language you want. Dom Bulletin, I think, has four or five languages four or five languages at this point. And Michael, does it allow you to create your own language or no at this point? Yes, it does. So there you go. And uh, OpenLog is, is all English. And Domino Wiki, Ben? Absolutely English at this point, yeah. But as you can see, there, there has been a lot of thought by a lot of the, the project chefs to include multilingual support. So it's a case where some users could open up a, a French language template and other users on using the same data could open up an English template? Well, the application developer, before they roll it out to their users, would probably review it, check it, see if it supports English, et cetera. But are you saying in a true multilingual where some users may want French and some users may read the same database in English in another country? 
in the same country. Oh. Yeah, it's, uh, we have users that have to look yeah. at it in French. Yeah, and, yeah. A a actually, John raised a good point, and, uh, and John and John, well, it's open source. So you can take the code and, and modify it if you'd like. But you know, I, I hear you that there is a, there is, um, when people, the, the project shifts, do develop the applications, a lot of thought is given to making it um, work as, as globally as, as they can. But again, open source is done mostly on people's free time, just like uh, Anil, Vince, and myself run the site you know, on our own time. That's why Gail gets mad at me all the time. So. <laughs> How about a shirt? Yeah. Oh, you got one, all right. Yes, sir. Um, I have an idea for an open MDF project that I'm utterly incapable of doing. Can I just like post it up there and say, hey, this is a good idea, and it really should be done, and can someone help? Well, what I would do is I would go to the main bar, there's a category for project ideas, and I, I would post it there and see what people say. And a lot of times, when people post ideas out there, they, it may get picked up by the bloggers who read that and say, hey, wow, this guy proposed the most awesome idea for a notes application. And you may get some responses, and you may not. I mean, I mean there's a lot of people who have po posted ideas, and uh, they just nothing ever came of them, I'll be honest with you. But a lot do turn into great things like you saw here today. So. Yes, next question. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. all right, you guys got to fight it out. Okay. <laughs> uh, in the so, back. Oh, we'll, I'll oh. release the lock on it. Go. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> Fantastic job, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. I was just wondering, if, can you publish some coding standards and UI standards so that the rest of the developer community can contribute to that one too? You know, that is a, that's a great point and suggestion because, well, you first saw that every Notes application here doesn't act or look the same. The ones that ship with you know, Notes and Domino don't all look the same. But as far as coding standards, I've ha I have had a lot of inquiries. I do have a great document that I'm working with uh, one of the vendors on the product showcase to see if they'll let me use it and donate it because it's, it's a great way. But then you're going to have to change the way you code. You may not. We're coders, man. Your code, I code way better than you. Why'd you code it that way? You know. But we can put some standards out there. How about a shirt? Oh. I'm in, sorry. I'm interested in contributing to the documentation as well. Is there a documentation wiki? That, uh, that we, because I can't necessarily write all the documentation for a product, but I could certainly chip away at part of it. Oh, for the wiki? Well, no, not documentation for the wiki, but a wiki for the documentation. <laughs> <laughs> Great point. I would suggest either that, that we, we do create something for that, and or at the project level, there is a discussion area for each project. The name of the person who manages the product may, project, maybe they want to Maybe you can write it and send them it, and they can post it in the documentation section and or the wiki idea. We should have a wiki. That's a great idea. Because that, that would allow us to sort of work away at it just it, with whatever time that you've got. The other thought, just on this coding standards, was given that uh, Note 7 now seems to allow us to share smaller bits like views, uh, I'm just wondering that instead of necessarily having complete coding standards, whether OpenMTF could allow us to share even single fields or elements of a design which could then be incorporated in other products. So it might be work at a more granular level. Uh, that's, a, that's another great idea. I, I would, again, post these great ideas up on the, um, up on the site and see, uh, see how people react to them. Cool. Cool. Have a shirt. Any other questions? Ah, in the back. Um, I see a bald this, guy. This uh, no. pertains to the help desk. Is this mainly for the administrators, or when it was saying the system information that could be put into it, was that being done at the client station? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. There's actually a form in the actions menu, I think, that allows you to create this inventory um, collector that gets sent into the database. So is the client initiating it? Yes. Like the end user? Yes. 
I think there is, however, a way for the administrator to click on or send a button out through notes mail for then for, to use that stored form in the forms.ntf database. You can download it and try it. <laughs> How about a shirt? Wow, we got a lot of questions. Yes, sir. A uh, friend who is a much better developer than I am created a, a fantastic anti-spam system that's really lightweight, easy to set up. I'm, su I'm such a fan of this system that I'd like him to distribute it, but I'm not sure he'd be willing to do so free, perhaps at a low cost. Um, in the initial part of your presentation, you mentioned that open source is not necessarily free. What's the best resource for him to look into licensing issues? Is that available on OpenNTF? Uh, at, at this point, no, but I would go to the uh, open, uh, what was it, opensource.org and see what, a lot, there's like 30 or 40 different open source licenses there. And some of them, well, the overall site there does talk about situations like you're, you're talking about here, so. Thank you. You're welcome, have it a shirt. I only have a couple left, so. Any more questions? No? Oh. Uh, did we ever reject a project? Anil? No, we don't uh, do any review of projects other than w when, when there is a situation where someone may claim that their project, uh, that the project posted was created by somebody else. We, it gets removed, so we never reject anything. You could do anything you want. It's a community site. It's your site. So have it a shirt. Any other questions? Why the hell did they schedule the off at 7 in the morning? That's what I want to know. Yeah. Well, we filled it. You filled it. Yes? Um, thanks for the presentation first. Th you're welcome. Um, do you have some kind of rating mechanism that you could... Uh, we could see like what application is very much in use and yeah actually we do supply if you if in this in the menus the first the second and third menus are called projects and downloads okay. there in e in the projects menu we have uh, by rating there's a view called by rating and we recently added the ability for you to rate someone's application and in the download section there's a view that says view by downloads and you can sort that by the most downloaded application and or the least downloaded application. <laughs> so yeah, good. Easy question, easy question. Four minutes we have left for questions and then we have to turn off the lights and get ready for Guru Palooza. I'm quite new to this group, but I think I fit in. <laughs> uh, do you ever meet uh, physically? Because you can't uh, drink a beer together over the net. Oh, yeah, it's, it's called Lotusphere. <laughs> so uh, we have a lot of, th there, there's a lot of activity on the site. Like uh, we do post usage statistics. There's a lot of people who do collaborate and communicate outside of the site that you don't see on there. But that, that is something to think about. You know, I know lotususergroup.org has these virtual meetings and maybe, maybe we could do something like that. That's a great, that's a great suggestion. <laughs> All right, we got to wrap it up. I'll be in the speaker room for 10 minutes and two can too. See you there. <laughs>